He couldn't believe how quickly the light disappeared. From the glade proper, the forest didn't look that big, maybe a couple of acres. Yet the trees were tall with sturdy trunks. Packed tightly together, the canopy up above thick with leaves. The air around him had a greenish muted hue, as if only several minutes of twilight remained in the day. It was somehow beautiful and creepy, all at once. Moving as fast as he could, Thomas crashed through the heavy foliage, thin branches slapping at his face. He ducked to avoid a low-hanging limb. Almost falling, reaching out, he caught hold of a branch and swung himself forward to regain his balance. A thick bed of leaves and fallen twigs crunched underneath him. All the while, his eyes stayed riveted on the beetle blade scuttling across the forest floor. Deeper it went, its red light glowing brighter as the surroundings darkened. Thomas had charged thirty or forty feet into the woods, dodging and ducking and losing ground with every second, when the beetle blade jumped onto a particularly large tree and scooted up its trunk. But by the time Thomas reached the tree, any sign of the creature had vanished. It had disappeared deep within the foliage, almost as if it had never existed. He'd lost the sucker. Shuck it. Thomas whispered, almost as a joke. Almost. As strange as it seemed, the word felt natural on his lips, like he was already morphing into a glader. A twig snapped somewhere to his right and he jerked his head in that direction. He stilled his breath, listened. Another snap, this time louder, almost like someone had broken a stick over their knee. Who's there? Thomas yelled out, a tingle of fear shooting across his shoulders. His voice bounced off the canopy of leaves above him, echoing through the air. He stayed frozen, rooted to the spot as all grew silent, except for the whistling song of a few birds in the distance. But no one answered his call, nor did he hear any more sounds from that direction. Without really thinking it through, Thomas headed toward the noise he'd heard. Not bothering to hide his progress, he pushed aside branches as he walked letting them whip back to position when he passed. He squinted, willed his eyes to work, 